So, hello everybody, it's Christmas time and Driven by Moss brings you several presents. I reduced the wish list and there's goodies for nearly all controllers. Let's start out with the fire. So the fire has several sequences and so far to enter the edit menu, you had to press Alt and Step, but now I added the feature, how it works also on other controllers that you can simply long press a note. Let's have a look at that. So let's go here into the note sequencer. Maybe let's switch here to the polysynth. It's easier to see. So we have it sequencer. We can program something in. Simple and stupid. Let's start the clip. And now to edit the note, you can simply long press it like this. It gets yellow as well. And then you see here the step. You can select more notes. Let's stop that. You can also select these notes and it says three notes are set. And then you can change the settings of all the three notes. For example, you can change the length like this, the selected notes, but well, maybe let's show all of the notes. So you can change their length and you can also change the other ones, the gain and all these settings can be changed for these three notes. And to leave that, you can unselect simply the notes and the note edit mode is off again. On to the next one, Generic Flexi, one of the most beloved <laughs> simple scripts, which is pretty powerful for every MIDI device or for each and every device which speaks MIDI, you can use Generic Flexi. And uh, yeah, my friend Odo notified me about an issue that it actually stores only the configuration of the MIDI trigger as well as the action, but it does not so far store the other settings. So uh, for example, the actions and also the input name and these two areas, basically. That's now also possible. It stores now all these settings into the configuration file as well. And this is pretty handy if you want to exchange such files with your friends or other people using generic Flexi. On to the next one. So let's have a look at the XQE. It is an MPE device and it provides several modes, as we have seen in my introduction tutorial. And you also have already a built-in hardware arpeggiator with that. But in the new update, I added the Bitwig arpeggiator or a Reaper arpeggiator if you use Driven by Moss with Reaper. And this gives you more features. For example, you can also use the Hold mode, which is also available without using the arpeggiator. <laughs> so let's have a look at that. So let's play something. Not too impressive. And to activate the arpeggiator mode, you need to long press the first knob and then we have the arpeggiator mode on. It also tells you that here in the application. To deactivate, you do the same, also long pressing it and you get the info that it's off. Turn it on again and now we can use it if you click it once. So note repeat is on. You can also then change the other parameters. So the first one is the, the period. So the delay between the notes. And you can also change the length of the notes. And we can change the modes. So everything that's in Bitwig. And we can finally change the octaves, so the range where the arpeggiator is playing. And we can also activate hold if you simply click the fourth knob. But you, as I said, you can also use it without the arpeggiator, so you can switch it off, and then we still have the hold. And to switch it off, you can click the fourth knob again.
But there's more. So far, you had to navigate the configuration, the global configuration modes a bit blind, but now you get a bit of feedback. So if you, for example, change first parameter, you will get now the notification in Bitwig about the tempo. Same with the other ones. You get also the info about the base node and the info about the selected scale. And something else which is interesting is that in display mode, you can use all the configurations that the editor of the XQ gives you. So you don't have to use that setup. You can also use the other layouts and you can select them on the third knob. If you keep here this wave symbol pressed and you could have, for example, that one, or we could have here the drum layout, for example, which is helpful for the drum. But let's go back maybe to the second one. So let's pick that one for the polysynth track. And if you go now to the drum machine, we could pick now for the drum machine the drum layout. So we have that one, which makes it nicer to play the drums. And if we go back now to the other track, it does now remember your selected choice. There's a little bit of drawback with that because I could not really fix that. The way it's working in the background is if you switch to another page of tracks, it might not always work that it remembers a setting. I will talk with intuitive instruments. Maybe they can implement it a bit differently so it's easier to adapt it to the Bitwig backend. But so far, it's not working all the time, but most of the time. <laughs> so next one, Launchpad. So here's the Launchpad Pro Mark II, but the changes I will show now do work with all the Launchpads I support. And yeah, what can we do now or what could we already do in a previous version in the play mode here? With the fourth scene button here on this model, it's also called Velocity, you can activate this bottom row, which gives you some additional functionality like sustain, pitch band, and modulation. So it helps you with the missing wheels and widgets, which we don't have here on a launch pad. So for example, you could press the sustain knob and you can hold the notes and you can also pitch bend them and down as well. And you can add modulation. So this is intensity and it's also pretty easy to slide them. So it's working really like a modulation field in a way. So, and this functionality is now also available in the piano mode. So if we switch here to the piano mode, which is here, we can do that as well. So we can activate it also with the fourth scene knob. You have now also this row, it moves up one row. And here we can also use the hold function. And we can use a pitch band and as well as the modulation. Yay! So much for the launch pad. And last but not least, let's have a look at good old Mackie protocol. Yeah, here I'm running the Mackie protocol on uh, bearing an X touch with an extender. And there are some slight changes here how to navigate devices, especially also the specific track and project parameters. So here I did load up a polysynth, and here we have the parameters which are for this track. And maybe let's add something else so we can see that better. Let's add a delay too. And here we add the page and let's say I need to have here the frequency filter and I want to add the delay intensity and that's enough. And also let's add something for the project. So these are the parameters from the whole project and maybe let's just for demonstration purposes, let's add here the resonance. So now we go into the device mode by here on X touch is called plugin. Let's press the plugin and we see here DC. So these are now the device parameters where you can change the individual parameters here of the currently selected delay. If I select the polysynth, we will see here the polysynth. Maybe one information, it gets sometimes weird if you do not change here the settings on the top. And that's another bug from Bitwig. Sometimes it's not showing the 
settings for the X touch, you need to restart Bitrig. So if you sometimes turn it on when it's running, it's not coming up here. Yeah, and to make it work, it's it's sometimes confusing because they have now this setting here, any track or device selection, and it can jump to different things depending on what you have selected and the device might then show other things. So to be on a safe side and make this unique, always make sure you have only selected device selection, which will then show the selected device we have in here and nothing else, especially not project or track parameters. If you press it again, we are now, this is new, it's now showing PP for project parameters and we see now the project parameters which we mapped here, I hope you can read it a little bit at least, where we can change here the resonance now. And if we press it again, we are at the track parameters, TP, and here we have here the filter track and the edit mix setting. And I hope this is easier to navigate because the old one with the shift and plug-in again was broken anyway. So this is now simply pressing one knob so you can toggle through these three settings. And this does also make something useful in Repo where you have the, also the track parameters which you can select for a track and the project parameters are the parameters of the master track. So pretty helpful also in Reaper. Yeah, so much for the Christmas goodies I had for you. I hope you like it, dig it, enjoy it, and until next time, make some fun music.